I guess that what we're saying about Jesus as Christians is that 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 dimension, that element of God's life, which from all eternity is pouring out, is kind of captured for a moment in one life in history. That in this life, from start to finish, there's as much God as humanity can hold. And that the outpouring and the joyful responding that goes with it, that's all there in that life, and there's no interruption. I can't imagine what a human life like that would be from the inside, because, you know, that's not my life. But that's what, what we're led to believe, that because there's that concentration of the divine life there, somehow history just turns on its axis there. And not surprisingly, but really frighteningly, because this life is so full of the recklessness of God's love, people around hate it. They're embarrassed, they're afraid, they're even hateful, they, you know, they push back at it. They push it right out over the, over the cliff edge mm. on the cross. And as they look down into the abyss, a voice behind them says, Peace be with you. <laughs> You're back. Early on in House for All Sinners and Saints, one of the original people was Andy, and she's, she's kind of raised Unitarian, and she's this radical, beautiful, radical queer woman. And she texts me, and she goes, Hey, uh, hey Rev, I, I need some pastoral care. And I said, All right, we met for coffee the next day. And I'm like, What's up? She goes, I think I'm having a crisis of faith. And I think, Well, what does that look like for a Unitarian? And she goes, I think I believe in Jesus. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You're like screwed now. I'm like, seriously, wow. Because sometimes Jesus just like hunts your ass down. There's nothing you can do about it. When, when you kind of stand on the margins and people accuse you of wasting your time. I, 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 Jeremiah says, in this place of which you say it is a waste, there will be heard again the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voices of those who sing. So you don't so much make those voices heard, that's not the prophetic thing, but you somehow push people forward and say, go ahead, you know. And you, you make the space and you bridge the distance. And, and that happens, and that's the kind of transformation I think that, that fundamentally, deeply, is what God longs for. If you tried to express love to human beings and just came down and said, I am love, love each other, we automatically, because we're so afraid of hard things, we would automatically go to like unicorns and rainbows. And so you would have to send someone to show what love in the flesh looks like. You would have to send what does love look like. And so otherwise we would romanticize it. We would turn it, we would we would make it easy because that's who we are as people. We're going to make it easy. And so then Jesus comes and says, okay, I, I am love. I sit with the people you're not allowed to talk to. I do all the hard things. I make all the hard choices. The important word is not death, is not resurrection, it's and. We are saved by the death and resurrection. In other words, it's a saying no, a saying yes, excuse me, a saying yes to both of them. First the death, oh shit, and trusting even this will lead to resurrection. That, that's salvation. You're indestructible. You, you, nothing can destroy you now. That is the salvation of the world. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will rise again or come again. We have said that in mythic form. But I meet hardly any Christians, Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical, Charismatic, who know what that means. <laughs> because we push Jesus into this atonement thing 
which was a juridical transaction. You don't fall in love with the juridical transaction, you know. Instead of God is in immediate personal solidarity and union with what I'm suffering right now. That Jesus you'll fall in love with. <laughs> that Jesus you'll give your life for. How far does love go? Love goes as far as God's heart can go. That's God on the cross. God has the whole world in his hand. That's how far love goes. Very, very expansive. And in it, Greeks and Jews, Hutu and Tusi, Americans and Africans, Catholics and Methodists, black and white, get reconciled. You know that text also where Jesus says, there are many rooms in my father's house. That's how far it goes. That's the amazing gift of our God, that expansive love that he was able to lay down his life for us on the cross. Jesus is God's dream for the world, God's dream for all of us. Jesus is how God feels towards us. I mean, the good news is that when God became flesh, God suffered too, just like the rest of us. And that when God became flesh, God hung on a cross and looked out at the people who put him there and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I mean, the good news is that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. The good news is that we fellowship with Christ in suffering. The good news is that we meet God in the least of these. Uh, the good news is, is that there's hope. Um, and the good news is that God looks like Jesus. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. I find that to be incredibly good news, especially when I'm fretting and worrying that maybe God hates all the same people I hate. Maybe God hates me. Maybe God hates the marginalized. Maybe God's against me. Maybe God's against this world. And then I look at Jesus and I see God dying before holding our sins against us. I see God choosing to hang on the cross and choosing to forgive rather than hold our sins against us. Nadia Bowles Weber says that Jesus was, says, I would rather die than be in the sin accounting business anymore. That's really powerful. Um, so that's the good news, it, and it's good news for everyone. And if it's not good news for the poor, if it's not good news for the marginalized, if it's not good news for the sick, the suffering, it's not good news for me. It's not good news. Um, so yeah, and I, I believe it. <laughs> uh, sometimes with a limp, and sometimes um, it's a struggle, but I believe it.